Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales of the Space. Space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. Shotgun Fantasy. In a world where humans can't perform magic, elves and other races have reigned supreme for millennia. Rumors have spread lately of a human invention that might change this. These guns were underestimated by everyone except the elven merchant who saw an opportunity for profit. Written by that 2009 weird emo kid. Laughter echoed through the crystalline halls of the Imperial Palace for the first time in centuries. Apparently, humans were accelerating tiny spheres of metal at their enemies through a barrel using controlled explosion to fuel its strength. They hadn't moved past blow darts or throwing rocks. Wrangle waited over the council to regain their composure. He'd never seen them display this much emotion. They couldn't grasp the danger of the upcoming conflict, a folly of their youth. In fact, this meeting only bolstered their confidence. Wrangle sighed. He couldn't fault humans for resenting his people. Owls had pretty much exploited them for millennia. Even after a zenith revolts, where human nations across New Gaia gained sovereignty, the economics of magic were too much for a hurdle to overcome on their own. After all, one competent wizard could produce more than a human town's entire workforce. Unfair trade agreements ensured that their governments were still reliant on Elvish Empire for most of their industries, keeping them subservient through indirect means even after earning their freedom. Wrangel knew this was about to change. He witnessed a group of bandits slaughter his private caravan with these uh, weapons. Most of the hired guards fell before they could shield themselves with magic. The spell took too long to cast. Wrangel only survived because he was invisible before the humans fired on him, barely escaping into the night. The Council of Emeroch didn't care. They attributed Wrangle's experience to bad timing and tactical mistakes, traveling in a crime-ridden colony after sundown. There wasn't any way a human force could defeat an elven one with proper planning. They wouldn't understand that enchanted arrows, due to the charging time they required, were too slow to shoot more than once before the gun wielder reloaded. Sure, they had more destructive potential, but that didn't matter when you were outnumbered already dead. The fact that anyone could pull the trigger without much training meant that, when compared to the years of practice required for magical prowess, this new weapon was simply too efficient to ignore. For every soldier that fell on both sides, the humans would replace their casualties much quicker. It would spell doom for the Elven Empire. Please, Council, said Wrangle, I beseech you. At the very least, we should study this weapon and come up with a way to counter it. A lot of the council, looming above their millennia-old wooden high benches, still chuckled at the notion. Hensel, war master of Emeroch, also tried his best to hide his amusement. He acted as the unofficial leader of the council, a rising star of the empire that had become the youngest commander in imperial history. The plebeians loved him and deeply respected his father's legacy, to the point where the emperor himself acted wary of his popularity. Hensel actually respected Wrangel due to him being an old family friend. He clearly wanted to remain civil with the old merchant, despite the supposedly outrageous claim. That didn't make the condescension sting any less. Well, I'm sure the experience was troublesome. Don't you think that you're overreacting? It was just a bandit raid. Nay, no, it's precisely my point. My bodyguards were competent soldiers. I only hire the best, and yet they died like rookies to lowly bandits. You have to believe me. Hansel shook his head. I don't doubt your report. I just doubt that the weapon grants such an advantage. This is a dangerous assumption you're making, said Miriam, a portly elf with rosy cheeks. He wore an elegant green robe of sapphires and golden trimming, befitting of his fine sense of status. Due to his delicate position as president of the Merchant's Guild, 
he rarely spoke in these meetings. This was an incredible exception. Everyone in the council took note of his serious tone. Rangel wouldn't bring this to us if he didn't warrant further examination. I've known him for over two centuries, and this is the first time he's ever pleaded directly to our council. Don't you think you are dismissing him too easily? Hensel narrowed his eyes, annoyed. Then why haven't they attacked us yet? They might not understand their advantage, said Rangel. Hensel chortled. If they're clever enough to create these overpowered guns, but not enough to realize their potential, then we have nothing to worry about. The rest of the council joined his laughter. Rangel pulled down his face in frustration. They could be preying on our perceived superiority, gathering their forces as we speak. Isn't that how they gained sovereignty in the first place? I get the merchant like you would think that, but as someone who has studied warfare, I can assure you there is no way a single weapon could produce such an overwhelming advantage, not when compared to a fireball or a lightning bolt. And that's without taking into account the sacred weapons like my sword, with enchantments that can rival the might of several battalions. The rest of the council, except Mirren, nodded along. Wrangle sighed. I'm sorry, added Hensel. I understand this was a terrifying experience, but we have more important matters to discuss than soothing your anxieties. A merchant as esteemed as you shouldn't have to travel outside our borders, not at your age. Have you considered perhaps, uh, retiring? After the meeting was over, Wrangle went to his home and packed his bags, preparing for what would probably be his last trip. Hensel had a point. Wrangle was a merchant, not a general. As a businessman, he knew the golden rule of all economic trade very well. The market doesn't give a crap about your opinion. If Wrangle was right, then he stood to make a lot of money with the knowledge he had attained. Nobody else in the Empire would enter this market. They were too proud to consider adopting a human invention. At least, not until it was too late. Wrangle knew that he could require the resources needed to make the best ones in the world. Once the conflict arrived at their doorstep, the council will have no choice but to buy them from him. It would make him the richest man in the Empire if he played his cards right. Unfortunately, he couldn't do it alone. A partner was needed, someone who already had experience designing guns. That meant Rango required a human to fulfill his ambition. He had to ride southeast towards the imperial colony of Muxor, which was where he was originally raided, then travel west through the marshlands until reaching the contested border, an active military zone between the human nations of Lucretia and Roulettenburg. From there on, his journey would grow more uncertain. Wrangle would have to go from town to town in human disguise, learning more about guns as he ventured into those lands. Hopefully, traveling alone with a little baggage would help avoid any monster or bandits. As he left Emma Rook behind in the horizon, he witnessed the eternal blossom tree glistening with rays of sunset in the distance. Its blue crystal leaves, deep emerald trunk, and golden flowers all bathed the city in a multicolored light, towering over every wooden skyscraper they had built. This was his people's divine shard, the crystalline embodiment of their faith in knowledge, nature, and victory. Its divine light shined all day and night for miles, burning up any monsters that experienced its radiance. The imperial palace was built into its hollowed-out base, there, the Etheris bloodline fulfilled their royal duty as representatives of the gods in mortal realm. Wrangle took several minutes to admire the view. This might be the last time he saw the ancient capital of his people. It would be a perilous journey into the human lands and require a great portion of his funds. But this wasn't about profits. Not completely, anyway. They could even force the Empire to actually respect the human nations. If... They didn't get conquered by them. Wrangle spurred his horse away from the view with a heavy heart. Although painful, it provoked in him an interesting thought that kept him awake for the rest of the night. Legend said Rigel, the god of magic, planted the eternal blossom tree eons ago with the help of Artemisia, 
goddess of nature, and was crowned with flowers by Morthox, god of victory and king of the divine realm. Mixing the natural world with magic is what many believe gave elves their advantage over the other long-lived races. Following that logic, shouldn't it be possible to enhance guns with magic? End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click with energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I would just quickly like to give thanks to our tier 5 members. Elithia, Barky, Pudicule, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Albard and Gusta, Savage Patch Papa, and Lord Azrakal.